Hello and welcome back to the Public Eye Business Podcast, brought to you by Granite Exchange. I'm your host, Sarah Travers, and throughout the series, I'll be speaking with local entrepreneurs and business owners to learn more about how their companies have come to be, to gain insight into their growth, and find out how they continue to innovate. So wherever you get your podcasts from, remember to keep an eye out for all new episodes and subscribe to stay up to date. Well, today I'm joined by our first ever duo in the podcast studio, Seamus and Olivia O'Reilly. They are the founders of Freedom Cosmetics. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here today. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, Sarah. You, thank you very much for the invite. Yes. Well, we'll be chatting to you in just a second. But first of all, as always, a little bit of background to Seamus, Olivia and their company. Olivia and her husband Seamus were inspired to start Freedom Cosmetics in 2020 with the desire to create products that are safe, nourishing and free from harmful chemicals, additives and plastics. Freedom Cosmetics develop honest and artisan cosmetics at the foot of the beautiful Mourn Mountains. All their products are natural, organic and cruelty free and all ingredients are from sustainable resources the packaging is plastic free and biodegradable their skincare products offer freedom freedom from preservatives additives and plastic fully free with no chemicals no palm oils and no preservatives i think we've got the message now you do this <laughs> the right way guys you've a fantastic business and relatively new but i just suppose why don't we start with you olivia first of all tell us how it all began how it all began uh, i have a long history of loving nature and natural products uh, it was always a wish of mine to um, kind of dabble and, and make my own. Um, I'm a nurse by trade. Oh. So, you know, I would have done the odd home therapy, you know, you dabble. Uh, and it was just a passion that of mine that I really wanted to delve more into. So myself and Seamus, we went to a lovely retreat and uh, it was like Stevie J one and it was fantastic but it was like a month before COVID hit so the idea was born out of it uh, which when COVID hit it gave me the time and energy to actually go in there and design products and look more into it. When you were working as a nurse yeah. um, obviously that caring side is there and and wellness is is very important to you yes very very much so um i loved looking after people i'm no longer a nurse uh, because this has taken over my time but i have i feel that it has progressed that i'm able to help more people to our products and were you working as a nurse right up until the pandemic uh, I suppose I was semi-retired at that stage. Uh, I had reduced my hours and um, I wasn't unlucky enough to work through the pandemic. I know, I was going to say, very, very difficult. I'm sure yeah. lots of colleagues were telling you just how hard it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But so it came at the right time for it you. It did, it absolutely did. Seamus, yeah. what about your passion for cosmetics? Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I was a bricklaying contractor. Completely different. Completely different. Uh, couldn't be further away from it. But uh, I, six months before COVID kicked in, I had challenges. So I took time off. I let some men go and took time to myself, asked some questions. That led me to a Stevie J retreat. And that cleared the way for new stuff to come in. So tell me about the Stevie J retreat. It was down in Waxford in a place called Craig and Lodge. It's, uh, it's all to do with energy and healing, and it's a, it's a great place. There's no you know TVs, nothing like that. How it's, did you hear about this? I asked a question. I got an answer, uh, and something popped up on the phone, and I was I was all in uh, because of the quality the quality of the the answer. Is Gosh, to do with the quality of the question. So that's what I was about. Uh, I knew. Uh, what I was seeing and stuff didn't didn't fit me anymore, uh, and uh, you know even in the set the plastics and stuff on the site was uh, it's get it's getting out of hand. Uh, so I took the time off, went to the retreat, and that gave us a burst of energy and it cleared the way for this idea. Covid hit then, and then two months later we were Olivia was studying. I was doing other types that I would be big until we'd be all over the place at, at holistic healing centres and stuff. So uh, 
it just it wasn't a mind thing it was more feeling and I went for it uh, converted a big double garage and just I was all in uh, and obviously you're doing this together which is it's really fabulous you there be many couples that think gosh could I work together could I do all of this together but you you had this dream or this idea and it's taken both of you to get there. I mean, I'm sure, uh, well, I, there I'm being presumptuous, but I'm wondering, Seamus, what kind of reaction did you get maybe from former building colleagues and, you know, a man in this in this world? Did you find it welcoming? Did you find people sceptical? Uh, a bit sceptical because, uh, you know, from coming from my background maybe and not having, not been as analytical as most, but I, I get hit different ways, different uh Different senses. I had businesses. I was like Edison, nine hundred and ninety nine times, but before he got it right, you know. Oh, so, nice. uh, you know, but there's no failures. You, you just keep trying and you learn. So it was the business head you yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, this. and the passion, yeah. and, and I can have a way of getting things to happen and create things and opportunities, and that would be what I would be good at, you know. And uh, did you both recognise these strengths in each other, and you know what you were good at and what you maybe. The other was better at. Uh, yes, but now we are married. <laughs> so at the beginning, <laughs> there was a bit of, uh, you know, tossing about and, you know, trying to find uh, where both of us belonged within the business. Uh, but we fell into a very natural rhythm, uh, you know, after a couple of months. So talk us through that then, uh, Olivia. Obviously, you've got to come up with the product. Yeah. Is that what comes first? For me, I'm the mad scientist, as one would say. Uh, I'm passionate about skincare, so uh, I wanted to have a product out there that I was happy with, that I would use, that would give an option for people who wanted natural skincare. And I mean natural, there's no alcohols or anything like that in it, or there's no waters in it. So it's really just the oils and the butters and the good stuff. So uh, um, we come up with ideas, you know, together. Um, we kind of then see if it's viable or if it's something that we feel it would be, you know, good for someone. At the moment, working on lovely serums, which was Seamus's idea. So, mm. you know, yeah, they're nice. they, yeah, they <laughs> will be uh, released pretty soon. So, the idea does come, but we do talk over it, you know, uh, and we decide which is best for us as a business. So you were both at this kind of, it, 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 you could look at it as just the perfect time, the perfect time to develop and build the business. Yep. You had that space during the pandemic to research and do the mad science yes. and come up with what works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I suppose that, you know, if there's any such thing as a perfect time, you just, you, you have to go for it. Just go the, for there'll it, always yeah. be something. Yeah. And, and that's, I suppose that's the mindset. There'll always be something. That's the busyness of life. But what about the setting up? I mean, it requires money, doesn't it? Well, that's yes. where I come in. <laughs> right. <That's, laughs> ah, you're the money man. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I, as I say, I had all the businesses too in bits and pieces. So it, it and, and, and thank God for it. You know, it, it, it everything's been a journey. It's been a good journey, you know. Uh, just uh, I wanted to end that chapter. But it, it we, we had the money and we, we uh, I had also used to have a restaurant and a bar and stuff, but it, so I had a wee bit of background into how to do things, stainless steel and, and what equipment. And yeah. so uh, we got it set up lovely. And uh, yeah, uh, we, we we took at it. It was all in. Uh, when I when I go, I go. Uh, and, and <laughs> well, that's <laughs> it. It's like, what day do you say? We're going today. We're, yeah, we're, we, is it yes. the day you get the bank account? No, is it you what, know, what? Stevie J too also, you know, with a good thing about, uh, you know, a great friendship we have with them. And, and that's that's people who want to do you know that's that's uh, you know not just positive mindset but just a belief and and you just it's just good people to be around you know yeah. uh, and great support you know he's he's a great businessman too so there's there's We've uh definitely had the support there to yeah. to follow our dreams as well yeah um yeah. now we did start off in the kitchen first mm -hmm. of all like yeah. so but it was very quick progression from the kitchen to like a a single room, Seamus converted the single room into a wee lab for me, as I would bedroom, call it. And then it and took him over another bedroom. And then it and went then into <laughs> the uh, the double garage. Yeah. Into the double garage. Is that where you are now? Yes, that's yeah. our workshop. Uh, Seamus designed it. He, he did 90% of the work as well. Uh, so he's fantastic at that type of... Gosh, he sounds yeah. like an all-rounder. You don't need he to is, I'm very blessed. <laughs> so you're still allowed to be creative then? Yes. And and in terms of product development, talk us through the range then. What what was the first one and where did you go from there? Uh, 
Well, our first range that came out, I suppose, was our moisturising bars. They are different, yes, uh, uh, they're not a cream, but we designed them for individual skin types. So there's different oils and butters in every single one that suits the skin, as well as the essential oils. We don't use any artificial scents, so it's essential oil-based as well. So the essential oils are quite important as well for your skin and for different skin types. So it was all designed around that. Um, I'm a firm believer that you don't need the water, you don't need the alcohol or anything in that to have a good... You want the good stuff. Mm. So that's what we launched, first of all, was our moisturising bars. It was a range of nine. And then uh, uh, we quickly progressed into other items because people were asking for them. This podcast is sponsored by Granite Legal Services, a niche business and immigration law practice located in the heart of Newry City. Granite Legal Services provides legal advice to both individuals and companies alike across a wide range of industries, from employment, commercial or corporate law matters to immigration law. Granite Legal Services focuses on providing legally sound, practical advice to its clients. To get in touch, visit www.granitelegalservices.co.uk or contact 028 3026 2200. What did they love about the bars that made them think this is different? Well, this is suits my skin. It is. It is that it's different. You know that it's designed. There was no water. Most moisturisers are sixty to eighty percent water. The white moisturisers that everybody uses. If water was that good for you, it'd be great after you washed your face in the morning. So this is the reason why you run through it so <laughs> quickly. Nice. Yeah. You know our products last for months. It is the good nourishing oils that has all. The fancy buzzwords in them, they're all there naturally. You know, you have your helps with collagen, you, your retinols all, and your natural vitamins are all in them. So people love that fact. They liked it. It was a bar. It was handy. You could pop it in your bag. So do you wash with it and then the mm. moisture... S- no, what do you no, do? No, it is a moisturiser. You warm it up between your hands ah. and the oils come off and you apply to your hands and face. Or you can apply to wherever you want. Okay. Yeah, they are <laughs> but you know. <laughs> they are in their natural state. So they're butter, shea, mango, coconut. Yeah. No one's butter. So stand, therefore they should be buttery. So they melt. Uh, they're not liquefied in order to suit plastic and consumerism. So do you uh, have to keep they, them in cool places? To an extent, uh, yeah. They melt at about 37 and 38 degrees. So a normal uh, house temperature is 20, 25. So, okay. And your skin type's usually about 36 uh, so the, as soon as they touch the skin, they start they, t- they take off enough. So and and this is they are concentrate. They're, they're in their purest form. They're the next stage after getting cut off the tree. Yeah. Nothing done to them. So yeah. it's nature at its best. Uh, you know we're not about the bling. We're about the real thing. So yeah, you are, and you can. T- it's yeah. so genuine in yes. everything yeah. that you do. Yeah. So what was your route to market then? How did you? Presumably you had to test the products, first of all. Yes, yeah, so we have a lot of friends and family who have glowing skin. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yes, we, we did. We did a lot of testing uh, with friends and family. Of course, it has to go through legal testing as well. You have your cosmetic safety product assessments. So, you know, any skin care, anything from like a bath bomb up to fancy serums all have to be tested before you're legally allowed to sell. So you have to make sure all the legalities are in place. You have to make sure, you know, your labelling's all correct. Uh, there's a lot of laws. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I had no yeah. idea. No, yeah, there is, you know. There's a lot of challenges that way, but but to, I suppose the, the easy thing about it was is because they were at their purest, that they're, you know, they have, there's no chemicals, no nasty, they're, they're butters, you know, and yeah. an, animals eat coconut and stuff, so, it, yeah. you know, you it, can, it, they're good it's, enough to eat. Yeah, yeah you know, basically, so, you're not going to You know, so <laughs> there's, there's nothing even dodgy there that needs to be really... Uh, other yeah. th- other thing certificates yeah. and so it was yeah. it was challenging with the, the you know but no, at the same time it was easy because they were natural. Yeah. So what after you get yourself up and uh, running and make sure that everything's legitimate yeah. and okay and all of the claims or you could stand over them all. Yeah. What happened then? Uh, I suppose we just kind of hit the local artisan markets. You know, uh, um, we were spoke. It was in the middle of COVID, so an awful lot of them weren't open. Yes, that was difficult. Mm. It was difficult, uh, um, but the first few months was quite, as you were saying, it was we're trying we're trying to get our name out there. We did things like we had a large um, billboard in Uri when we launched. We put money into that. It was there for a year. Um, we did a letter drop. Postal drop. Forty-eight thousand houses. 
Did you? Yeah, we we, so you just we started local. Started, yeah, and definitely. you know, a lot of people were th- were were locked down. They were at yeah. home. They were wanting to do their home treatments and mm. pamper yes. themselves and look mm. after yes. themselves. So mm. yeah. there was a market there. You just had to tell them about it. Yes, it's it's getting your name out there, and that's the main thing, you know. And then, of course, we were on social media. Well, I was going to say, social media has been incredible for entrepreneurs, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. Mm. How do you get that presence? And you know, do you, are, do you buy into the whole influencer sphere? Well, we went through a stage of uh, trying to work with influencers and we find that um, it didn't really work for us. There's not too many influencers that uh, are in the natural field. Now, we'd love to meet somebody. Oh, There's yeah, anybody we'll, out we'll there that's into their natural. <laughs> we, we want to meet them. We find that most that we met were not into natural yeah, products. They were, were really into just we getting their pay. and Yeah, and we wanted somebody more genuine who would stand over it for what it, it actually is, yeah. uh, a, a real product. A and real go, I love this. Yes, this and they have happens. a passion about it, you know, um, and we find a lot of the influencers, the followers were other influencers. So once we give them a product, we had like 20 other younger influencers all wanting our products and we were like, it just seemed to be that they were supporting their own industry instead of and that's an expensive you know outlay all the time if you're giving away yes, products it is yeah. um, do you think that's important though do people have to try to really understand how fabulous they are yeah yeah you know like we really want someone to try it and fall in love with it and promote it um, we're well aware that it's not for everybody you know um there's people out there that love their products and have been using certain products their whole life and That's we're it. not can't we're, please everyone. we can't please everybody yes. we're not here to hit them over the head about natural <laughs> products we're here to offer an option you know um but so i mean the sustainability message is yeah. is is huge but also the cruelty free yeah. and do you find that maybe younger ones are, are buying into that more or is that you know across all generations yeah uh, they th- definitely are you know i i would have some very interesting conversations at the artisans and stuff and, and people's awareness is, is changing you know even you know people who would be brought bought in 20 years ago about the natural but maybe not so natural well, uh, so they, they know they, now yeah. they're starting to know the difference you know because you know people had choices 10 15 20 years ago to turn plastic free and it just didn't suit consumerism. Or the, claims were the, being made, as yeah. you said. That's yeah. why the legalities the, exist. You know, all sorts of, you know, the alcohol, st- it, it feels good maybe for half an hour, but it goes on in. You have to uh, reuse it and, and feel good again. But two weeks later, you have to go back for more. Whereas our stuff, maybe, you know, you could be looking at three months, you know, before you're, uh, you, you're coming back to us, you know, and that doesn't sit the big boy. <laughs> but yeah. So Seamus, whenever you've put the billboard up, whenever you've done the leaflet drop, whenever you've started getting, you know, friends and family using mm. the products, when did you think, oh, I think this is working? We're, t- we're, you know, we've turned a corner. Yeah, uh, I think we, we always had that. Uh, j- just by the conversations we had at the artisans, we, we always knew, we always knew it was. Uh, we were taking it back to what they were using for hundreds of years before the consumerism thing come in, before the whole uh, Sigmund Freud psychology come in, what makes people buy some, put the milk at the back of the shop, you know, that before all that type of stuff. So, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, you were walking through a place, you would have rubbed coconut on you to protect yourself from a bit of sun, you know, because it has sun factor maybe seven or eight or so, you know, as well as moisturise. I so, didn't know that. Yeah, so, yeah. It, you know, we were about taking it back and, and uh, it's the stage after cutting it off the tree and, and with it, it's and nature has it engineered, not us. We just we just lightly melt it down and blend a few uh, and, and put them into a tin, you know, and, and you know, uh, even the tin thing, you know, when, when we go into an area... We leave, we leave tin behind us, which is a commodity, which is into can the blue bins. Again. It can yep. be sold on by the council to put money back into the system. We don't leave a trail of plastic that costs us all till uh, I'm up and down Ireland a brave bit building stuff. And I have yet to see plastic going in one end and coming out as a cube and then being reused. Uh, so uh, I'm all on for the tin and stuff because it is a commodity. I and wish it a lorry load of it. I know <laughs> it's, it, it is great though when you know that you're you're claiming something and then yes. it's actually happening because yeah. I think a lot of businesses out there absolutely have that same aspiration, but maybe are outsourcing to another company and just hoping, hoping you know that their waste will mm. that that, that, that yeah. they're doing what they say. But yeah. you know, you know it 
a hundred percent that everything you put in is natural. Yes, and you this is massively important to you. It is. It is very important to us. You know, uh, as well as being natural is what we've talked about with the lack of chemicals and basically as close as nature as you can get it but it's the ethical and sustainable that is also very important to us uh, you know we want to know where it comes from we want to know that uh, a forest has not been knocked down or a jungle hasn't been cut down so that somebody can plant, plant trees and say that they're organic it's a bit like there's a lot of buzzwords out there yeah you know like you have your organic products say an organic chicken it might not even leave its cage. But if it's fed organic food, it can be sold as being organic. Gosh. And it does run on to other fields. It goes into, like, uh, mm. you know, you have your skincare. I want to make sure that my products come from a local sourced, you know, it can be a farmer's group. It can be, a, you know, there's been some of our oils come from women's groups over in poor countries and they're looked after. So it is a big passion of ours that it's definitely ethically and sustainably resourced that is the one of the main goals so how do you find we have a wonderful wholesaler okay and they have won awards for being for what they do um and uh, all our basically all our ingredients come from them i can go into the website and i can go right back to source where it comes from so going back, that's yeah, you absolutely have to to see that before yes. you buy, yes. and you believe it. Yes, yes, they have. That's I mean, they have won so many awards for it. You know, they. Um, I did a lot of research at the beginning. You know, and you go into companies that are selling organic coconut and organic this and organ organic mango, and you, they don't tell you where it comes from. So what advice would you give to others who, you know, just don't even know where to begin with that? I mean, you find this brilliant wholesaler, but a lot of things, these are conversations you're maybe having over email or on yes. a telephone. You can't actually go to the country to see. No, no. Like the wholesaler we have, it's a lot of doc- documents there as well that you can go into and you can download and you can source where they come from all the legal end of things. But you need if you're really passionate about the ethical end and the sustainable end, not just the organic end, you will do your research. You know, uh, contact them. Where do you get them from? Have you ever yeah. been bitten around this? Have you ever thought, oh, I'm totally buying into this. I love this ingredient, and then do you know what? We're not using it. Um, it wasn't an ingredient. It was more when we were trying to launch a meal gift set, and uh, we got lovely brushes you know shaving brushes but we weren't convinced that they were they were what they were so we we stopped because we couldn't go further Mm. back and find out actually i can i have some more information here so we stopped yeah yeah Yeah. how negative would that be i mean if uh, you are claiming all of these things and then do people uh, will will somebody would that come back and bite you do you think it would surely and i i we're not the sort of people that could stand and look somebody in the eye and tell them something is when it isn't uh, you know and the fact that you know we are doing a product and it's plastic free means we're not taking the easy way that that took a lot of planning you know and to make from fresh and you know and how are we going to grow we're going to have another warehouse maybe in Dublin to maybe talking about so uh, one in England using Dublin people to make for that area and English people you know, so we're so that's the growth. Y- yeah, plans. that's the growth. Yeah, plan. and when do you see that happening? That'll probably be it's talked about now, so it'll probably be next year. Yeah, next the, year. This, this, we're in talks now at the minute. Yeah, we're big pieces, into so. people. Yeah, not machinery. Yeah, we need a certain amount of machinery, but we're very much we don't want a big massive factory pumping out yeah. loads of chemicals or whatever. We want to promote local we want to have local people work for us and it's the same when we expand now we are in different countries but we want to when we get our growing we want to have a hub in in dublin we want to have in in england somewhere but we want local people so how many people do you have working for you at the minute five wow yeah there's five there there's another few uh admins and stuff uh, to come before the year's out but uh Five people can make a lot of stuff. Absolutely, <laughs> you know, because it's uh, you know the workshop is uh, it's 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 all hands on. There's not much machinery and stuff. So, but they can they can do a lot of stuff. You know, yeah. uh, 
And it would be great to get a little bit of advice about that stage, you know, when you think I'm going to take on an employee, I'm going to bring somebody in because a lot of businesses are fearful of that it is, moment. It is quite fearful. Yeah, there's, there's bits it of is. help out there with the government and stuff. Now, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I wish it was a wee bit easier to get help, but it, it can be challenging too. But, uh, you know, uh, Nuri Enterprise, there is bits of help with them, Liam Quinn uh, up there, and that's where we're, we... Uh, uh, he recommended it's for business. You know the business. The year awards were runners up after whatever seven months or so. So uh, that was that the that chamber, that's all yeah, great. and then chamber of commerce yes. business awards, and you were runner up new best new business. Yeah, yeah and we won the Gofford program as well. So yes. we got to meet the mayor at the, t- at the time, and it was an amazing experience. That was about six months ago. What yeah. did that mean to you? What do, you know when you get that recognition? Oh, very good. It's uh, wonderful. Uh, on a buzz, it's something happening all the time, you know, uh, from radio stations down in Dublin, uh, the Jennifer Zamparelli show, and uh, Olivia been in the front cover of Local Woman magazine. And, yeah. you know, I this, saw that. That was strange. <laughs> there was something happening all the time. And that's that's the, that's that. It takes some, you know, you, you, you ask the right question, something will come along. And, yeah. you know, it, that's, keeps you, that gives you the buzz to continue on you know too it does but it's a great story and that's why you ended up on the front of local women magazine because you're a local woman who's done something amazing oh right <laughs> <laughs> I f- it was uh, an amazing experience um just a wee bit strange to go into the shop and see yourself constantly when everywhere you're not, you know i wouldn't feel <laughs> confident in front of a camera i don't i don't like being in front of a camera i never really did so it was definitely out of my comfort zone um but I would do it again. That's growth. Yeah. And whenever you're looking at sort of the world that you're occupying now, mm. there's a big difference perhaps maybe with the with the natural products versus, you know, the, the cosmetics industry is just bling, yeah. gorgeous, yes. lights, camera, action, everybody's dressed to the nines. Do you feel, the, are you in that space or do you feel you're more in a... In a different wellness space, uh, well, more 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 wellness, more uh, wellness, more wellness, and, and self care, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm aware of all that that other side, the bling side, and uh, now we do intend to launch natural makeup, yeah, in plastic Ooh. free, because we're aware that the cosmetic community is one of the biggest polluters of plastic. Uh, so, w- uh, one of my goals is to produce go back into like the 1920s 30 styles you know metal cases with your makeup and all in it so very elegant interesting very you know so so the product development side of things how how busy does that keep you if i'm not physically doing it i'm doing something else it's in my brain mm-hmm. you know it, it it's always something different like we're um doing a natural sunscreen at the moment uh, which is with the university down south to get all the science behind it. So you do be thinking of it, and you do be, you have to hop in and out. There's a lot of uh, getting your diary out, and this times for this, this times for that. Because if it if I didn't do that, I would go mad. And you know, you've you've got a, a son as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, how did Seamus? Uh, named after his uh, yeah. dad, obviously. Yeah. Um, how does he fit into all of this? How do you find the time to be together as a family and? Uh, sometimes he goes to the market with us. We, we we come back there from the Wild Ritz Festival in Sligo. We were there to also sell and uh, and uh, uh, he came with us. And so it was a working holiday, uh, and it was my first concert, concert or uh, festival and his. So it was it was different. Uh, uh, we didn't camp. We we rent a house. <laughs> <just> <laughs> <laughs> You're not into the camping. Because, uh, we didn't see you at Glastonbury there. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> we used to have a motorhome, but. Uh, uh, no, it, it was it was good, and so he he's he's also learning. He yeah. might not be aware, but he's learning, and he's taking it. In. And then sometimes he bought in and say that one smells like cook uh, chocolate and yes, stuff because that's we have favourite one. one. Cocoa <laughs> moisture. We have a moisturising bar smells like chocolate, but uh, it, so he's he's learning away. You know. Uh, yeah. Now, the fact that we work together and we work for ourselves is actually a bonus in as well because mm-hmm. we can leave him to school and collect him. You know, which is a big thing. He comes home to us. Mm-hmm. He's not gone home to a child mind or anything like that. So it w- we're always about. So it's even though it's hard, hard work, you can work around your family. And oh, that's yes. why a lot of people want that entrepreneur, mm-hmm. self-employed yes. lifestyle. Yes, that was a, a big thing that it worked around we, Seamus. We, yeah. 
Wee Seamus. Wee Seamus. <laughs> As opposed to Big Seamus. <laughs> so tell me what it's like working together. We touched on that at the start, but now we've, we know each other a little better now. So, uh, you know, how do you organise your day? How much time do you actually spend together? Um, it kind of fluctuates. Mm. You know, like we do like a, have a regular meeting weekly. We try and we do that together. Uh, and then the day... Seamus goes off and does his end, I go off and do my end. And because the business is built around the house and very close, we see each other a lot. Mm. You know, but we have our different jobs to do and we just get on with it, I suppose. Yeah. And, th- and then, you know, maybe a break during the day, we go for a walk, you know. Yeah. Uh, or meditate. That, that's, what, that's what the idea is. And, and what about stu- getting away from business chat? Is that difficult? Uh, it is, but it is. We, we sort of, uh, in the first few months, we it was full on because it was needed. Uh, but yeah. th- that would have led to burnout. But uh, so we we are into a routine now. We we usually have the evenings ourselves. But sometimes something comes out of somewhere and it needs talked about for half an hour, or we just go by as an idea and never be done. So it was talked about enough to get it imprinted in the brain, and 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 then it's brought up the next day, or, or yeah. uh, uh, steps are taken towards it. You know. Do you learn different things about each other? When you're running a business together, we do because me and Olivia would think two different sort of two different ways too, yeah. you know. Uh, and then how, who who wins? <laughs> Not wins, or how do you reconcile? We do a lot of discussions, <laughs> right? <laughs> Does somebody else have to come in and no, 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 no. no. we discuss time out. <laughs> no, yeah. You know, if, we're, if each of us are passionate and we have two different points of view, we'll put it to bed for, and then we'll come back to it. Uh-huh. You know, so. Uh, we're, we're well aware that we're, we're everybody's different. You know, we'd be a bit boring if we were all the same. Yeah. So we do a lot of discussions. Well, sometimes we, we you need a good half. Yeah. <laughs> and I suppose maybe with you, you'll say maybe you'll uh, it'll blow up a wee bit yeah, more than, yeah. than it would maybe if you were working with somebody else. Yeah. yeah. We'd just yeah. Get it clear the air and yeah. Get yeah. Out of well, the you know, yeah. We, yeah. We've, we've we've been we've kind of fallen into a better routine with that now yeah. than but we did at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. But we we, we yeah. weren't like. In our teens, we so yeah. we we've been through a bit, experienced life a bit. Have so you been together a, a long time? Uh, eleven years, is it? Eleven or twelve years, uh, I so think. Yeah. yeah. And where so did you meet? Oh, the Warm, Marine. Warm, it's not even open Warm anymore, point. is it? Warm Point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Lovely. So yeah. Love, yeah. It's a lot to answer for. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned there, uh, Olivia, that you're in many different countries now. So. Yeah. Things have really taken off. So tell us about the products and what they love and f- where you're selling them. Uh, well, we find that uh, a lot of our products are going to America. We have a lot of independent uh, stores that have bought from us. They seem to love our natural deodorants ah. uh, and our body butters. And the odd one goes for our shampoo bars. So, But they're very much um, the natural deodorants in America. That's a big thing. Yes. Uh, now, we have a lot as well in the Netherlands and in um, Switzerland around that area. So, again, it's the natural deodorant. Um, very popular. Mm-hmm. Very popular. And we have a good few in the UK now. And, uh, um, again, our natural deodorants. But it's more our soaps as well that goes to the UK, you know, and shampoo bars and the natural deodorants. Which is your favourite product? Oh... That kind of changes in the mood. <laughs> you know, like at the moment, again, as I was saying, we're working on um, a lovely kind of serum oils. And I've fallen in love with one of them. It is amazing. It's We're using very, I suppose, ancient oils that would have been used in Egypt and in the Himalayas. And we're mixing them together. And they would have been used in practice even back to the Veros. So, um, oh, I'm excited. Yeah. It, I'm looking forward to my that. My skin <laughs> feels wonderful. I've only been using it for a week. And at a woman at my age, I've, you know, I'm getting a lot of spots and things like that. My skin has changed and hormones and that. And within a few days, it has cleared up. It's glowing. Yeah. It really is. Mm. Yeah. To so watch this space for the serums. What will yes. that be called? What will they be called? Well, this one I think could be called Morning Star. Um, mm. because we're using um, a lovely plant and I don't want to say it too much yeah. in case uh, <laughs> yeah, someone says it is only but uh, yes and it absolutely it's just it's wonderful and your skin feels wonderful and the thing is you can put it anywhere you can put it in your hair you can put it in your face you know your hands Whatever you want. It's and Seamus I should have asked you the exact same question mm. do you have a favourite product? Uh, the, the 
because they last so long, I haven't got round them all. Even though we're, uh, it's our place, uh, I haven't got round them all. But the, they're all good, you know. And then I done a lot of studying into plants and stuff, and the energy and the vibration of them and stuff. And knowing when somebody puts a ham on, just what it actually does, whether they're aware of it or not, the the feel good factor, you know. So uh, I'd be very conscious of that, and even the people that I'd be talking to would be would would so a lot of them know their stuff mm. about what a I plant is. I love the body butter now. I yes. that. So there's yeah. a lot of people. It's so moisturising. Yeah, yes. if you've dry skin, that just soaks in. It's lovely. It yeah. soaks in, and then it remains in the depth of the skin because there's no alcohols and water to keep it. D- to, it, it doesn't just keep going on. Uh, it it will remain in the depth of the skin for longer, and therefore less use. Uh, you know, you wouldn't have to put it on just as much. You know. Uh, a little goes a long way yeah, with our so, products. So it, it lasts for yeah. months, you know. Uh, but they're, they're all, the body butters is good, you know. I'd never thought I would have used a body butter, uh, but I do. Uh, and moisturisers and yep. the, the natural deodorants are uh, are, pr- are pretty good. Mm-hmm. They are, they, they blew my mind just how good they are, because I as I say I was a bricklaying contractor, so... Okay, so physical. let's even talk, you know, antiperspirant versus deodorant. Do people uh, sometimes say, oh, I need, I'd need something a little stronger than that? You know, what people usually say, they don't usually say something like that. They usually don't know the difference anymore between a deodorant and antiperspirant. They That's the big thing. Okay. There's a lot of education in this job <laughs> and business. You know, you're trying to get out, you know, real facts. So a lot of people are used to using the sprays and they just assume they call them a deodorant. They're mm-hmm. not an antiperspirant. You know, uh, um, but they're very different. They're two different things. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're not sweating for twenty four hours, you're using it. You're not using a deodorant. You know, your deodorants don't block your pores. They uh, allow you to sweat, but they absorb the sweat and the smell. Sometimes you might feel a wee bit damp under there, but that's natural. But you'll not smell. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's what, it, and, and that's what the natural deodorants yeah. do. Yeah. You know, if you're looking at an ad, an ad that tells you have seventy two hour coverage. They are blocking your pores. What are they doing to not you? Not good for you. It's a natural process. Yeah. Sweating is a natural process. If you're not allowing that to work, where does the waste go? It is waste from your body. Mm. Where does it go? It goes mm. back into your body. Yeah. This is when you get your issues with your skin, maybe your stomach. A lot of women issues around their breasts. That's been very much linked to. Um, there's a lot of science out there. Over but spray. Yeah. yeah. Right, so think again about what you're yeah. using yeah. Under your the, on and your skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah and uh, you know the, the deodorants. Uh, I, I I just love them. As I say, I was blown away by just how well they do work. Uh, but uh, you know, the the one of my favourites. You know, but sometimes it takes a couple of times away. Sometimes it can be to do with the food. Maybe we're eating. Maybe sweating a bit more. So it can be to do with anxiety. It, there's lots of things why people sweat. Uh, and that's all to do with wellness and stuff. But when that's another reason that they expect just to spray some on and, and and just seal everything up, which it will only lead till something else down the road. Yeah. So it's very exciting. You're doing so well. Um, for really only having started up what two years ago. Mm. Where yeah. do you see yourself in five years now? There's obviously the big expansion plans, but yes. do you have a business plan as to, or, or do you have a vision as to what it looks like? Oh, we, we do. Uh, you know, even three weeks ago, uh, we were talking to a, a fella that <laughs> just bumped into who is massive into skincare, and I stood beside him, and I didn't know who he was, but, uh, uh, you know, it, we're constantly meeting people, and we're evolving the ideas. As a matter of fact, he told me the next day that he couldn't stop thinking about me, and he was... Um, a manufacturer of a multi-million pound company. So, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what were you saying to uh, him? <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, you know, you don't know. You don't know who comes along with what. But yeah. we know we're we have like a thousand day plan. So we're not tripped up on a day to day. You know, because everybody can have a bad day and a bad two days. Or, but there's really no such thing as a bad day. You learn something every day. Uh, is you know. Uh, so we have a thousand day plan. We see where we're going to be and 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 know where we. Yeah, yeah. thousand day plan. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, and for me, I always tell people when they ask me, I says I want to take over the world mm. with my products, <laughs> our, our products. You know, so you know we think big. Yes, mm. w- why not? Mm-hmm. You know, why why can't we just be the next large natural skin care company? You know, why does it always have to be somebody else from a different country and they're important the stuff here? Why can we not? Do you think sometimes Northern in Northern Ireland we have that imposter syndrome sometimes? Like, gosh, really? Or what will other people think? It's the yes. confidence to believe yes. in yourself and, it the, is. and the permission 
to give yourself to yeah. to be that confident. Yes, you know, like our our products are wonderful. They're wonderful for your skin. We have so so many positive feedbacks with people that why wouldn't we promote it around the world? We're already in a good few countries now. There's nothing stopping us taking over the rest of it. <laughs> you know, that's. Well, the purpose of this podcast, Olivia and Seamus, and I ask this question to everybody who who visits uh, the podcast studio, is to inspire existing business owners and those ambitious entrepreneurs who maybe are sitting there listening to this going, oh my goodness, I have an idea. I want to start a business or grow a business. So what insight can you give into the success of your business? Um, And what advice would you give to people who may have that idea, but have no idea where to begin? or are unsure as to whether the risk is worth taking? Seamus, you first. Uh, Okay, Uh, well, I'm answering now. Uh, Go for it. There's no such thing as a failure. You will learn on on every turn you will learn uh, and take every day as a learning day. Uh, You do something once and it doesn't just work the way you think, you'll do it different the next time. That's that's all learning. Uh, Go to look at somebody who has... uh, if you like a, a good business and, and, and look at their strategy, you know, uh, as I say, there's a follow up on there in our mass, uh, Stevie J, who, who teaches this sort of stuff too, you know. Uh, so th- th- there's there's answers. If you if you, the, the quality of the the question or the answer will be to depend on the quality of the question. So ask yourself, and it'll it'll come to you. You know, uh, this, the, the the internet there, you can find out anything. You know, you just people to help this guidance with the council and uh, to keep at it if you believe in it and it's good and it's it's going to help and uh, I, I would go, to, I go for it you know uh, especially when it's when it's to help people that, go for that, it and get a, help from people real, who know about business yeah, I suppose that's a real worthy yes. it's going to help people and help the planet uh, and you have passion it, it will go it will see you through so the purpose as yeah, well yeah. understanding yeah. that absolutely okay. um, pa- passion and love for your idea you know, if you're half thinking about it, oh, I think that would make me money, it might make you a bit of money, but you need to be happy in your job as well. So you need to have that um, passion and love for the idea. Do a lot of research. If you're, you know, as Seamus said there, there's a lot you can learn online. You know, do research into what you actually want to do. Is the market saturated? Is it something that will be successful for you? But if you have a real passion Go for it. Yeah, it's go for it because you don't know. Yes, it, the market could be a lot of people doing the same as you. But if you go into a marketplace, bread aisle, what? How many different types of breads is there and different brands, and they're all making their money. So, be aware of that as well. If you have that passion, go for it. Just take your take the first step and see where it goes. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much and good luck to Freedom yeah. Cosmetics, to, to Seamus and Olivia for the future thank and for taking much. over the world with your yes. uh, beautiful products. <laughs> I look forward to that. Thank you so much to Seamus and Olivia uh, for joining me today. And I'll be back very soon for another fantastic episode of the Public Eye Podcast. Thank you. Sarah. Thank you. Join me next time where I'll be joined by Mairead Mackle from Terraces Enterprises. This podcast was recorded in Granite Podcast Studio. Interested in starting up your own podcast but don't know how? Granite Podcast Studio can help. Record your podcast in our state-of-the-art studio, which is based in the heart of Newry City. Our studio has cutting-edge and user-friendly technology and can seat up to four people. We also provide an editing service for our team using your guidance and editing notes to provide you with a flawless finished product, leaving your listeners wanting more. For more information on how you can get started, visit www.granitepodcaststudio.com.